So, the good news is, I did my first stream on Twitch last Sunday. Bad news is, I forgot to press this switch. So none of it was actually saved. Now you might be thinking, how the hell am I going to show you the first episode if it doesn't exist? Well, I'm not. This is the end of the episode. Goodbye. Nah, I'm just kidding. I played through it. I played through it again, recreating important aspects and events to the best of my ability. So I hope you enjoyed the first episode of watching this new exciting series. I start off on the starting screen. Wow, I know. And a weird old guy asks for my gender and my name over the internet. So I lie about both and say I'm a girl called Dova. First thing you do, first thing you do in this game is get your starter. So I completely ignore my mom. Don't talk to her after she raised me for 10 years and leave forever going to some stranger's lab. The stranger claims to be a professor and says he'll give me a Pokemon if I do him a favor. So I go and check out his balls and he's offering a Cloyster, a Cacnea and a Dialga. Cacnea is out of the question, leaving me with a legendary Pokemon that can bend time itself or a vagina. So I grab the vagina so it can do the professor's favour instead of me. I call her Cindy, and then do a quick drawing as the rule says here. Beautiful. But after all that, professor tells me that he wants me to get him an egg. Great. So off I go, once again not talking to my mum. <sighs> God damn it. So off I go again, reluctantly speaking to my mum after some stranger forced me to and run out into the tall grass that has been confiding me in this town all of my life. Cindy's got a pretty good move pool, and pretty much one-shots anything that comes across with Aquatail. I get to the next town and run up to the lab, after once again talking to a stranger. The old guy from the starting screen is there, and gave me his egg. Lovely. I carry the egg all the way back, because apparently he can't just do this himself, and run into some other weird guy. He throws a fancy bird at me, but Cindy takes care of it very quickly, and we go deliver the egg. Not after naming the rival though. So I named him Joe, as that was his actual name, and I don't have any creativity. After all that, I can finally leave and start my Pokemon adventure. About time. But wait, here are some Pokeballs. But wait, here's how you catch a Licky Licky. Okay, now I'm free. Should I go tell him I'm leaving forever? Nah, let's go get a Glaceon instead. It lives on Water Pulse on 1 HP, and this is where I learned that recreating this is going to be a lot more difficult than I thought. Every time I threw a ball at it, it never shook once. Every single move I make is predetermined. If I miss, I will miss every time I reset and try again. If I fail to catch it, I will always fail to catch it, unless I make a different move. This makes recreating every single situation perfectly completely impossible, but I will still try my best. Anyway, on the second ball this time, I easily caught the Glaceon. Someone in the chat wanted me to call it Pog, so that's what I did. And of course, a quick one minute drawing. After that, I went up to the next route to get my next encounter. And we don't speak about that. Once again to the next route, and I find a Ledian. Now most people probably scoff at this and hate this encounter, but Ledian's great. I slowly whittle it down and catch it. Name it Lucifer, as that's why I call all my Ledians, and do an amazing, beautiful drawing of them. After this, Lucifer began to take center stage over Cindy, with a little bit of switch training to help, absolutely destroying everything in his path, and easily leveling up to the heights of Cindy in no time after the trainers. Time for the next encounter once again. It's a Sviper. Not the best Pokemon in the world, but there are worse. Like Macargo, for example. It takes a lot of my balls, but I catch it before it can miss a jump kick and kill itself. Which is surprising, as it has hustle, so you'd think it'd miss a lot of those jump kicks. Me and the chat agree on Charbok, and do a lovely drawing. Actually, this is probably one of the worst of them all. It looks infected. Oh, yeah, did I forget to mention? I only have one minute to draw these, and I'm doing it with a mouse, and without any reference image. Anyway, time for our final encounter with Force Spirit Tower. And I could not find it to save my life. So I'll just say I found a Magma Zone. I was very excited and happy about it. It was quite dangerous to fight, but Charbok held its own very well, and after all the balls I had left, none of them worked against it, leaving me Magma Zoneless and Ballless. 
I cannot recreate what happened next. I went into Sprout Tower and got my encounter. It was a Soul Rock, which I was fine with getting. I switched to my Cloyster and yes, it is weak to Rock but also has insane defense and is better than Lucifer which is 4 times weak to Rock. The following events were so unbelievably rare I couldn't recreate it. The Soul Rock had used Rock Blast. The first one was fine, didn't do too much damage. The second was a crit, taking me to about half health. Then the third one hit, taking me even further. Then the fourth, and then finally, it hit five times. A level four Soul Rock defeated my starter in one attack, hitting five times with Rock Blast without missing its 80 accuracy, and also critting one of them as well. If all of these hadn't fallen into place, my cloister would still be alive, but the RNG gods dictated it was not meant to be. Now, here's the thing. A normal person would run from this. Any of my team would not be able to take an attack like that again, especially as two-thirds of them are weak to rock. But I wanted something back, for killing Cindy. So I sent in Charbok and started throwing balls. The first one failed, but I managed to survive a rock blast this time, since it only hit twice. I decided that I'd rather just soul rock over Surviper, and threw another ball. This time, it used Rock Wrecker, easily destroying my Surviper. However, I could have run there, but I didn't. I went into Lucifer, which, yes, is four times weak to Rock, and I threw a ball. If I failed this time, it would still have to recharge after Rock Wrecker, but I actually caught it. I named it Derek for some reason and ran back to the Pokemon Center to say my final goodbyes to my starter, Cindy, and Charbok. It was a sad moment, and then I looked at Derek, and it all finally clicked. It had huge power, doubling its attack. It finally made sense how it murdered my team so easily, but now I wasn't that sad because I had this power on my side. I drew the easiest drawing in the world and went back up to the tower, absolutely obliterating every single encounter with Derek until the very end the very last trainer. His final Pokemon was a higher level than mine, so it was already a difficult battle. First turn was a Chimchar. This should have been easy for Soul Rock, but no. I missed my Rock Blast, and then the Chimchar went into Sacred Fire, burning me of course, putting a huge residual damage on Soul Rock and absolutely neutering my Sweeper of its huge power. It was still easy to kill once I hit it, but now the fire damage began to stack. Now it's time for Derek to fight their brother, Lunatone. Lunatone used Power Gem, bringing me way down to about 10 HP after burn, with my Rock Slide taking it below half. I couldn't risk missing the next one. If I did, Derek would die. I switched into Pog, Glaceon, and waited for it to die. But it had Truant. I was absolutely kicking myself. If I just stayed in, I would have easily defeated it with Derek. But now I stayed in with Pong and used secret power, hoping at least to paralyze it, but instead of killing me, it used Sandstorm. Pong lived another day. I switched back into Soul Rock on the turn of Truant, didn't miss the Rock Slide and finished it off. One more Pokemon left, Pidgeot. The only problem is that my Soul Rock would die if I keep it in, as the burn would finish it off. I switched to Lucifer to try and get big damage on it with Magma Storm. And I missed. It plucked me and did over half my HP. I had to get out and sacrifice once again. I U-turned to my now level 5 Glaceon after the XP from Lunatone, and Pluck left me just under half health and damage. I stayed in, used Avalanche, and prayed. I survived on 1 HP. It was a miracle. I got off the Avalanche, doing huge damage on it, following up with an Ice Shard to finish it off and... Of course not. Pog went down, and the Pidgeot just barely survived as well. Damn. Now Lucifer could just come in and easily kill it, but damn. I was so close to keeping Pog alive. I have to now do the Walk of Shame back to the Pokemon Center and release Pog. Without it, I wouldn't have won the last battle. Now only two Pokemon remain, Lucifer and Derek. I go and absolutely destroy the gym trainers with Derek and get Lucifer up to level 14 in the grass, on par with the gym leader's highest Pokemon. I start the battle and they throw out a Machop, which is easily killed. 
Then, as their ace, it's a Huntail. I don't want to risk wood hammering it, since if Lucifer dies, the run will end after the gym. I used Bug Buzz, but it doesn't do too well. And then, they use Solar Beam, which is four times not very effective, and is a two turn move. This is completely free. I slowly whittle it down until it finally uses an Aqua Jet on me, which if it used from the start, probably would have beaten me. But now, we have easily defeated the gym, and it's time for one more thing. The more observant people watching may have read the rules, and as rule free states, after every gym, a random Pokemon dies. So I take out my random number generator, and it rolls a 1. Lucifer. I would have been sad no matter if you went here. Lucifer had a lot more emotional attachment than Derek, but Derek was also much more powerful. But now, a sad farewell to Lucifer, as I slowly watch it disappear into the void of the PC. And that's how the first episode went. It was a complete massacre, but at least we survived, right? We made it to the first gym and beat it. Sure, I've only got one Pokemon left, but it's the monster that is Derek who will carry me through this game. As long as it doesn't meet the same fate as Lucifer. Oh, who am I kidding? We'll probably lose next episode anyway. So, I hope you guys enjoyed episode 1 of my randomized Nuzlocke. Sorry there wasn't any actual commentary, but there will be next time as I'll actually archive the stream. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.